Floss Tube. I'm Jennifer. Welcome to Stitching with the Waves. It has been super busy since I made my last video. I was hoping to get one done last week, but it didn't happen. So I'm going to jump in and get one done today. Um, right now, we are in the middle of a cicada invasion here on the East Coast. So if you hear a weird um, kind of whining noise in the background, real high pitched, like electronic y sort of noise. I don't know, they make this weird buzzing sound. And they are loud. My house backs up to a uh, like a common area that's wooded um, and it between like us like a buffer zone between us and the next next area and it's just they're everywhere everywhere millions of them so it's super super loud uh, so if you can hear something weird going on in the background that's what it is um, other things that have been going on, we've just been super busy. My kids have about a week and a half left of school and then we'll be on summer break. So right now we've got lacrosse playoffs coming up this weekend. We've had all sorts of recitals and end of the year presentations and ceremonies and things. My younger daughter has her Girl Scout bridging ceremony. My older daughter is going on, we're taking a trip with her troop um, in a couple of weeks once summer starts so there's just a lot a lot a lot of stuff going on we've been out camping with girl scouts and just all kinds of stuff so i have not had as much stitching time as i would like but i did make some progress and i'm going to show you so let's jump into that um to start off with i have if you watch my last video you'll see how close i was on this persian carpet so this is a design by Natalia Frank, and it is a petty point design that I stitched as a carpet for my uh, 1 12th scale dollhouse. This is actually a free pattern. If you go on her website, which is uh, dollhouseneedlepoint.com, she, every year for the past few years, has released a free rug pattern, and this is the 2019 pattern, and it's just titled Persian. So I was really, really close last time to finishing up and I powered through all of the eggshell background that was left and I got it done. So here it is, completely finished. I left it on here. Um, the next step is to take it off and block it, but I left it on here so that you guys uh, could see the complete finished stitching piece and then I'll take it off and block it and hopefully have it completely finished before I do my next video. We'll do kind of a pan up version here, make sure I'm totally in the screen. Um, I used a few of the called for DMC colors. It was entirely charted in DMC, but some of the colors that have bigger blocks of color, I switched out for some fancy floss that was in my collection. So it would give, the, the variegation would give like a faded look to the carpet in some spots. So you can kind of see, especially in that center pink ring, um, and in a few other places, some of the colors are um, kind of fade in and out. So I love the look that it gives it. It's, it doesn't look like a brand new rug. It looks more like a, an antique rug that has faded over the years. So that's my finish on that one. And that, did I say it was a 40 count silk gauze? I think I did, but now I'm second guessing myself. All right, we'll make a pile over there. Okay, next up, I have a couple of finishes. I don't have any FFOs this time around. A couple of other finishes though, of small things. Um, once I was finished, that rug, I pretty much spent um, two and a half months stitching it straight without really touching anything else. I started it in March and I finished it near the beginning-ish of May. And so once that was done, I picked up a couple of other pieces um, that I really wanted to focus on and get, and get some work in um, and get finished off because I hadn't touched any of my pieces for my monthly goals that I set to do this year. March, April, May, didn't do any of my monthly goals at all. But the next piece up is a sal from a French blogger named Mimi. Her blog is called Flannery Au Fil de Seso. And this is the summer version. There's one for each season. And the autumn version was getting ready to come out. So I really wanted to finish up stitching the summer version. I switched up my colors a little bit from this so that it would be more of like a red, white, and blue and go with my summer decor. So if you are interested in this pattern or any of the other seasons, the link is in the description box below. And here is my finish on that. So I just picked some fancy flosses from my collection to use for this rather than the DMCs that she had called for. But there it is. That's my finish. 
Um, I haven't yet decided. I have spring finished and I have not yet decided how I'm going to FFO these, but I've, I've been looking, I've been trying to figure that out and I don't know, I haven't been inspired yet. So we'll see what comes up with that. This next piece I'm stitching to be a little pillow for a tray and it is Celebrate Freedom from White House Stitchery. So this was a start and a finish since my last video. And it, um, so Heather, the designer, she is White House Stitchery on Etsy. And then she and her mom have a floss tube channel, Crafty Cottage Stitches. So once I finished that summer sal, I still wanted to stitch like some red, white, and blue. It was May and I just felt like I want another red, white, and blue piece that I can make into a little pillow and put on my tray. And as I was looking around, Heather released this design and I was like, that's perfect. So she charted it all in DMCs. I did change this uh, darker red here, the darker, some of the blues, and um, I have a whole collection of whites in my fancy floss from the floss club I'm in, so I just picked a white as well. I did keep the lighter color red because there's not very many stitches. I just used the, the DMC color for that. But my colors I switched it to were, let's see, blacksmith blue for the darker blue, Milady's teal for the lighter blue, 12 grain for the white, and cherry cobbler for the red. So that's my, my floss conversion there. And here is my piece. And this was on 40 count mallow, just because I had a little scrap of it left from something else. It's a nice fabric. It's a very affordable fabric. I feel like the color is getting really blown out there. My lighting is not so good today. Yeah, it's just blown out today. My lighting always looks better once I get the video over onto the computer and off of this camera, but it seems really blown out today. It's very overcast and we're supposed to get some more rain. So I have a lot of artificial light today and that just throws the colors off. But you can get the idea. So the mallow, it's a very affordable linen and it's a good color. It's just a little bit more khaki than what I would prefer. I'd like something a little bit more gray. So I had gotten a piece of it to try and um, you know, this was a scrap that was left. So I decided you know, this fits perfectly on there. So I figured I'd just go ahead and use it up and stitch that one. So it came out really cute and it'll be a really nice little pillow once I get that stitched up. All right, next up, we're gonna move on to whips. So I decided for the month of June, rather than just going back to my regular rotation of trying to do my monthly pieces, um, I would try to spend like five to seven days working on each of my pieces that I have a monthly goal for, except for the ones that are Christmassy. The ones that have like a Christmas theme, I'm gonna wait and I'll give them a few days in July. And then hopefully in August, I can jump back in to getting some monthly progress done. But I just felt like since I had neglected these pieces for so long, um, rather than doing some new starts, I'll just give them some focused time to get stuff done. So this one I have been working on for the past week and I was hoping to get halfway finished, but I am not quite there, almost, but not quite. So this is, this pattern um, I should preface with is not readily available. It is a Quaker ball pattern and there are a lot of other Quaker balls patterns out there that are available. If you search you know, your favorite pattern website for them, you can find them. This one was one I saw um, a, a stitcher on YouTube finishing it. And then I was able to track down the designer from there. She's from Belarus and she didn't have a way to easily, um, to easily sell me the pattern to like collect my money, but she was really, really generous and sent me the pattern for free. So that is the design, and then it's always hard on these pieces to tell the front from the back sometimes. Okay, I probably need my white behind it. So this is a piece of linen I dyed myself, and it is 40 count, just a white Swigert linen. And oh, I didn't, I don't have written down on this sheet. This is probably a mix of pearl gray and taupe. That would be my guess. So I do have it upside down. Oh gosh, when it's been too long since I made a video, I kind of lose my, my skills at showing things. Okay, so I have six of the squares done. There are 12 total. So I think I had these two up top here done, and then I did the, the one over here and the three in the second row. And then I've got four of the hexagons done. There's eight total of those, so they're halfway completed as well. 
And I think I had these two done here and I did these two over here. And then I did the two octagons completely. So for the octagons, there are six total. So I need to do one more octagon and then this piece is halfway stitched. But I just don't have time today um, with what I know I have left for stitching. I don't think I have time to finish the next octagon. So I'll show you, tell you, talk about my plans, what I am gonna switch to working on instead for the next couple of days. But this piece, super, super close to halfway done. Um, if I get back on track with this in August, I should be able to get it for sure halfway done and that'll be great. All right, next up is a new start. So I had been stitching on that um, Summer Red, White, Blue Sal from the French designer as my travel stitching piece because we started having in-person clarinet lessons and lacrosse practice and all that sort of stuff. So I was starting to have some time where I was sitting in the car and I finished that piece up so I needed something new for the car piece and I didn't have, um, I didn't, I didn't want to make it another Sal because I get behind. I don't have enough car stitching time to keep up with a Sal. So I pulled out this piece, Spot of Summer from the Drawn Thread. I have all the seasons and I have finished Spot of Spring this year. I'd like to get all four of them done. So I picked up Spot of Summer to put in the car. I thought that would be a good one. Um, Cause it's small, I have my floss. I just pulled out like a strand of each color and keep it on a thread drop. And you know, it fits in a tiny little hoop. So I just felt like it would be a good, a good piece. So I just, I wanted to get it started. Um, so I just did the first few stitches there in of the of the tree right here. this tree right here in the center that's just the the bottom of the tree trunk there so I just wanted to get a few stitches in so I wasn't in the car trying to figure out where I was and what was going on um, so this piece should be pretty easy to pick up and just start working on so hopefully that'll work out well as a travel piece this summer as we just have a few things going on I don't have a whole lot of time in in the car either so I'm hoping I can finish that one throughout the summer but we'll just have to see so that is pretty much all the stitching that I've done. Um, as far as cross stitch goes, I have done some quilting, but I'm not gonna show it to you today. It's, uh, I've only worked on my daughter's quilt, which is a Christmas quilt. I showed you the front of it last time. And the back is gonna be, um, not minky, cuddle, cuddle fabric. It's, um, if you've seen the minky, minky dots, this is just a, it's flat. It's a, a soft, but it's super soft fabric, kind of fuzzy. It's great for baby blankets and stuff like that. And she has some baby blankets that have that material that she really loves. So she wanted the back of it that'll be touching her to be the cuddle fabric, which I've never sewed with before. And I knew that it could be kind of tricky. So I watched a bunch of videos and one of the, it's stretchy. So one of the tips I saw was to use a lot of basting spray to make sure the layers are sandwiched together tightly. So I did that and I've got it, it's all rolled up. I'm in the middle, like about halfway through quilting the lines into it. So I don't, it's rolled up, you know, like two tubes from each side and it's a little bit of a beast to like wrangle underneath the sewing machine. So I don't want to unroll it to show you guys when it's only halfway stitched. So I will, um, I'll show it to you next time. Hopefully it'll be completely finished and I'll have the binding done and everything. I'm trying a new binding method that's new to me. So if that works out well, I'll show you. Otherwise I'll be able to just scrap that idea and do a traditional binding instead. So I'm hoping the new way works out because it should be quick and easy, fingers crossed. Um, but we'll see. So that's it for quilting because I haven't done much there. Well, I've been working on it a lot, but it's a big project. It takes a long time to get that quilting done. So we are up to plans. So in June, in a few days here, Little Women from Stitching Book Club will start. So you can see the, the color pal palette of the floss there. I had a few colors I was missing, so I went and bought them yesterday, and now I've gotta figure out what fabric I'm gonna use. The one that she has down there in the bottom of the picture is like a cream cream color, it looks like, a very, very pale cream color. So um, I need to see if I have a piece of fabric. It's pretty large, it's 130 by 154 stitches. So this is a big sal this time. <laughs> um, so we'll see if I can stay on track and keep up with it because I also um, have a lot of Christmas theme stitching that I want to do next month. So um, we'll see if I, hopefully I can stay on track with this one as the parts come out. But I need to see if I have a piece of fabric that's big enough or I need to dye something or whatever. So I will be figuring that out in the next couple of days here. 
And then yesterday, I got the autumn version of the Sal from the French designer Mimi. So part one came out and it's just, you know, up, up here in the corner. Um, so I got to also pick some fabric for that for floss. She has her recommended colors here um, in DMC, but I have some colors that I like switched up my color palette a little bit for autumn. So I'll use my standard autumn color palette with it. So I need to get those flosses all pulled out and get the fabric all set up because it's here. I need to get it. So that is my plan for today is to figure out the fabric and floss and how I'm going to, how I'm going to do this piece and get it started. And I'll probably work on that piece until it's done. It usually takes me about three days to get one of those steps done when she releases it. So that will kind of be my weekend stitching here um, until I get that done. And then once I'm finished that, I will pick another piece from my monthly set, which will probably be 101 alphabets, I think. Um, I might pick the door stopping piece instead, uh, but I haven't yeah, we'll see when I get to it. We'll see what I'm feeling like working on that day. And then if I pick up door stopping and work on it for five to seven days, I might actually be able to complete it. I don't have that, you know, it doesn't take that long to do each of the different sections. So we'll see, maybe I'll get that done. All right, and then um, my next thing I wanna do is this petty point start because I don't have anything started in Petty Point right now. I finished the rug and I didn't start anything new. I have a bunch of rug patterns that I would like to do, but I'm a little wary of starting one because I'm afraid I'll get obsessed with it again. And I have so many other things that I want to stitch. And so I, I don't want to get distracted from stitching those things right now. So I'm thinking I'll just start a small Petty Point project that I can work on for a few days, put down and pick up again. Um, so I was, I'm excited to start start some things that I can frame because I got a couple of those little frames I showed in my last video, some little like bitty bitty tiny miniature picture frames and I have some picture frame molding that I can make my own little frames. So I wanted to get a few more pieces stitched up and then I'll make frames and, and get all that stuff figured out. So I went on Antique Pattern Library and found a whole bunch of patterns to pick from. So. Berlin work is a type of needlework that was very popular uh, starting, I believe, in about the 1880s. So it became really popular when there were a lot of advances made in dyes and a whole much wider range of colors became available in dyes and they were more color fast and just a lot more vibrant. And Berlin work is typically done with wool. So they would have dyed wool that were all these vibrant colors. Um, most of the pieces I've seen as examples, the background is black. So I thought that would, some of these Berlin work patterns that are on Antique Pattern Library would work well um, as pictures from Idle House. So I went through and picked out ones that are the right size. I need things that are no bigger than like 60 by 80 stitches. That would work out, it's a, it's a one inch scale dollhouse. So one inch in the dollhouse is equal to one foot in real life. So if the painting is two inches tall, that's about two feet or 24 inches in real life, which is a fairly you know, good size. So you know, you're looking at a picture that would be like 18 by 24 inches. And that's a good size to put on the wall. So something that's that size or smaller is what I was looking for. And um, if you haven't been on Antique Pattern Library before, go check it out. It's amazing. They have so many patterns on there and it's all they're all free because they are no longer under copyright they're old enough that the copyright has expired um you can find all sorts of things not just cross stitch or petty point or whatever there's crochet there's all sorts of lace making all sorts of everything on there so if you haven't ever checked it out you definitely should so i'm just going to quickly go through these are um, free patterns so i can show you even though they're charts i can show them to you um, and you can, if there's, if you see something here that you want, um, you know, just let me know in the comments and I can try to help you get the link directly to it. Or you can just go search for Lynn work on Antique Pattern Library and probably find it that way. So here's the first one, it's 70 by 70 stitches, just a nice floral pattern with a pretty border. Um, the next one is... This one that is, it's like a, forget what it was in. I was trying to see if it says here. It said in the description, 
online, but it, it didn't, that information didn't print. See, it's, it's like in some sort, it's a embroidered panel that's in another section of fabric. So my thought was to stitch this, this oval with the flower in the center. And a lot of, um, so it's just volunteers that take, the patterns originally would have been paper that was hand painted. All the little squares on them would have been hand painted with paints. And people, volunteers now are taking those original patterns and digitizing them and uploading them. And a lot of times they also upload a DMC list as well. Okay, my daughter's <laughs> on her headphones on the computer, so she's talking extra loud. So, all right, hopefully she'll be back to just listening soon. Um, okay, some more floral patterns. And again, they all come with a DMC list. And something I found interesting and thought it would be a good reason to start. So this one is 86 by 86, and there's like two, four, six, eight, fifteen. There's 30-ish colors, DMC colors here in this in this little 86 by 86 pattern. So it's gonna be a lot, a lot, a lot of confetti stitching. <laughs> so that'll be interesting. And I think that will keep me from getting obsessed with one petty point project and wanting to just work on it because it'll be so much confetti, it'll, it'll slow me down. I'll work on it for a day and then switch to something else. And that'll help kind of balance things out. I thought this one was pretty. This one's a much smaller one. It's uh, about 50 by 30 or so. That'll be great for just a small little picture. Oh, and these are really tiny. These are like 10, 20, maybe 30 by 15 or so. There's a whole page of different little pieces. So that'll be great for some little tiny frames. There's another one. It actually goes this way. No, I'm looking at it. No, it goes this way. Okay. This one. These are not all florals. I did print a lot of florals so I could decide which one I wanted to do. And I thought maybe going through them here with you guys, maybe one will stand out to me. This one stands out to me for some reason. That one's really pretty. It's about 70 by 70. That one's really pretty. I really like, like the big poppy in there. I'm gonna put that one in a separate pile. I might do that one first. There's another one. Here's another tiny one, 25 by 25-ish maybe. That'll be a great tiny one. Okay, and then this one I liked because it's got a lot of different little motifs. See back here. So it's got like this house up here I really like, this parrot on a stand. If I did like a black background behind him, I think that would be really pretty. Uh, the butterflies. This bird is gorgeous as well. That one's gonna go in the, I might start it pile. Oh, and this one's so cute. Little boy and a dog. That one's adorable. This one's pretty, the fox. A little bunny. Another one that is quite a few um, smaller patterns. So you've got like a, a deer down here that's really cute. Um, kitten, with the ball of yarn up here. Another pretty, pretty deer up there. So, like a lot of those. Just cat on the pillow. This is one, it's not quite big enough to do as a rug. So I was trying to think, I don't know, maybe I just do one of those panels to hang on the wall. I don't know, I really liked it. The colors are just very bright, very vibrant, very pretty. And then last one is this windmill, little house with a windmill. I really love that one. And of course it's all blues, so I love that. So, all right, so probably, looks like I've kind of pulled these two. I got this bird or the flowers. Oh, I can hold this. Or the flowers. 
thinking one of those might be first. I don't know if you guys have a, any you see in that stack that if you made it through the whole stack, because <laughs> that was a lot. Um, if, you, if there are any that you think I should start with, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear. Um, so I think that's it. That's all I've got to share. That's everything I see on my notes. And um, hopefully I will be back here again in about a month. It is going to be a little bit longer before my next update because we've got, um, I'm going to be doing a little bit of traveling and then my parents are going to be coming to visit for the first time in a very long time. And it's hard enough to get a video in when it's just a few people in the house. There's going to be even more for a couple of weeks. So um, I probably will make my next video, I think at the very end of June or beginning of July is when you can look for me. Um, if you don't see me around before then, I'm here. I'm still working, still stitching as much as I can. I just um, have a lot going on and I'm not able to make a video until then. So I hope you all are doing well and enjoying these first few days of uh, feeling like summer. And I will see you back here again in about a month, hopefully. Bye.